How convenient that I bought, bought my corn cob pipe along with me on this adventure. As I sit on the front porch of the homestead of the 1800 farm. All right, it says, during the Great Depression, low-income South Carolinians suffered greatly. To provide paying jobs and affordable recreation, President Roosevelt established various programs, some of which built new parks. The building that I'm going to film now was built in 1939, and it is a building that is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. All right, anyway, let's go take a look at it, shall we? Got a lot of stone work. Look at the entrance to this. All this stone steps. It is a pretty long building. I doubt it's going to be open. But let's go see. This property has been placed on the National Registry of Historical Places by the United States Department of the Interior, Kings Mountain State Park. Yeah, and of course it's it's not open. And here is a lake. I believe it's called Lake Crawford. I'm going to fish in it. A little bit later on today as you can see over here they have canoes that you can rent I did not bring my kayak but next time I probably will all right so as we head on down the lake towards the lake you can hear running water there's a spill well and, uh, of course, I'm not going to cross it, but let's go take a look at it. So here's the lake. Here's where the water goes. Just walk down to the bottom there. I don't know if you'll even be able to hear me because of the water, the noise from the water coming over that spill well. But I tell you what, uh, as soon as I walk down here to the bottom, the bugs are crazy. I guess because of the low standing water. Uh, but we have a little cool little bridge here. And then the water just continues to flow from there. under the bridge and it just keeps on going through the woods through the mountain and here we have you can see there are many different trails you've got the national recreation trail you've got the historic farm trail which i'm going to do and then you have the lake crawford trail the trail is very easily Mart and uh, it's a uh, easy trail it's listed as easy or you know they have easy moderate hard but uh, I'm on the yellow trail which is a total of three miles been going for quite a while now 
but as you can see the trails are pretty well established so so far there haven't been any opportunities to accidentally get off trail going down right now coming back up is probably going to be the fun part nice little bridge here Hey, we got some bullfrogs going on over there somewhere. Did you hear them? All right, let's get back on the trail. One thing that's nice about this trail, you can see how clearly defined it is, but they have these little colored markers just to reassure you that you are where you're supposed to be. And I like that. But I had to shed a layer take off that bull shirt have on now just a t-shirt taking a little cheer wine break no burn but this trail I've, I have seen hawks squirrels geese rabbit um, bullfrogs turtles no deer yet no snakes yet but let's go see what we can find. I thought this was funny. Uh, I'm going to show you. This is the legend for the map. You see the very first thing there? That big red dot. You are here. Well, I've searched this whole map over. And there's no big red dot. That says you are here. Nowhere. <laughs> so I guess I'm nowhere right now. I'm in the twilight zone. All right, we are at the end of this trail, which brings us to the, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's a living history farm from the Revolutionary War days. And you'll get to see the buildings and uh, stuff like that. So let's take a little bit longer of a walk and go check out some Revolutionary War buildings. Here's an old building right here, and uh, they actually have turned it into a privy, as you can see. That means bathroom for you uneducated people. But check out the tongue and groove work with the mortar in between the wood. Very cool old building, and you can see there are more up here bigger buildings all right i don't know how well this is going to come out in the uh film but this is the farm at king's mountain state park and it was a actual farm and you're gonna see there's the privy where we were you're gonna see a smokehouse an outhouse you're gonna see the actual home place where the people lived a carpenter shop a sorg hum cooker and press you're gonna see the uh weaver house and the blacksmith shop a corn crib a cotton gin and a barn and then here's where they had the vegetable garden so this is what life was like in the 1800s let's go check it out here we have a well you can see up here there's a chain where they would have it They've got it blocked off, but I don't know, you can't tell or not, but there is water in there. So this is their water source for the farm. Over here, you can see it looks like they had an animal encampment where they would keep livestock. No, 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 I take that back. This is not, this is the, this is the forge. This is the forge, you can see there, where he would do his forging here's a fire here so this is where the blacksmith would spend his time this is the outhouse comment if you've ever actually used one of these I went to a gathering one time and that was your only choice all of these buildings are locked, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to go in them. We kind of scan the whole view here. 
pretty big farm. Let's go look at some more buildings. Another little building of sorts with a very, very small door. So I don't know what they would have kept in there. Now this is a cool looking building. I like the roof on it. See it's got the chimney there. Let's see what it says. A looming mystery. Okay, so this is where they would, uh, they had the loom where they would actually make their clothes. I'm lying down here on a bench in front of that loom house. I'm just looking up at the, the bottom side of the ceiling. And you can look and see that the wood, it still has some of the bark on it. And it looks so simple, but it's so in intricate at the same time. Just looking at how they used such primitive resources to create something so beautiful. And this shows the uh, another um, blacksmith area where they would make horseshoes and little objects, nails. They would actually have to make their nails and kitchen tools, farm tools, blades. Blacksmiths were very, very, very important people. And this is uh, the building right now. This is right here, but they've got it closed up. You can see there's the fireplace for the kiln that you saw in the picture. I'm going to try to get the camera to go in here see if you can see any of that or not I don't know if it's coming through but there's some of the tools he uses there's his anvil over there on the right and there's the fireplace so we got the loom on one side of the building and the blacksmith on the other all right let's go see what else we can find we got some more build looks like there's a big building over there and then I think the actual house the living quarters are right over there. We have another building. Lots of little buildings on this farm. The tools in this building included the farming chisel shown above. So this was a tool shed. This is where they kept all of their tools. I'll see if I can get the camera in there. I see some plows. Oh, this is interesting. We have a covered area with a big gigantic bowl. Huh. Very interesting. Okay. Sorg bomb is actually a kind of grass like many crops. So this is where the juice would be poured into that large iron pan that I just showed you. Boiling the juice removes impurities in water, transforming it from a thin yellow-green liquid to sticky dark brown molasses. So this is where they would actually make molasses. It's like we got a large group of people short coming up show up now. So. And this looks like a grinder. I guess they would put the, uh, right here, where am I? They would put the grass into there, and that would drain out the liquid. Then they'd take the liquid over there and boil it to create the molasses. So pretty, pretty cool. So the next time you eat molasses, think about what's involved, or used to be. Much simpler nowadays, I'm sure. All right, now we've got some wild stock, wild animals over here. Well, not wild animals, but we have some horses. Here's a honey, be careful, bees at work. You can see them flying all over the place. So I guess uh, honey bees were very important back then, as they are now. You can see them, hopefully. You can see them flying into the 
hive there. Hey, horses. All right, so you can see we've got all kinds of pasture area here for the livestock, the cattle, and the horses, and the cows. And of course they still use it because you can see what's left behind. But they even used that to help the things grow. In the middle here, there's not much of a garden right now, but I'm sure back in the 1800s, this garden would have been full. Okay, so this is a barn. I don't know which exactly animals they kept here, but you can see the right there where they would put the hay in. All right, so as we approach this building, we see some of the machinery. It's like the lumber mill. I'm assuming, I don't know what this would be, but something has got some big cogs and wheels that do something. I'm gonna see if there's a sign, but check out this. This is all wood, guys. You got a big wheel there that spins. It obviously creates some kind of force. All right, if I would have been patient enough and walked around to the front side of the building, I would have learned that this is the cotton gin. Exactly how it works, I have no idea. Horses or mules go in there and turn things to create stuff, which makes sense now with what this machine does. Because I do believe I've seen on something somewhere how this separates the cotton from the rest of the plant. And after it went through this whole process, here's what you would end up with. Bales of cotton. Alright, and this building was the uh, corn bin or the wheat bin. You can look through there, hopefully you'll be able to see the corn husks. After everything is shucked away, and sometimes it would be used for wheat, sometimes it would be used for corn, but this is where they stored it all. And this is the actual homestead. This is where the people lived, uh, the living quarters, and uh, I could imagine sitting out on that front porch and looking out over your farm. I can imagine sitting here after a very, very long day, rocking in this chair, looking out over your farm, over your accomplishments, and feeling proud to own this land that was fought so hard for. They probably didn't have a lot of time to sit and smoke but I imagine if they did it would be a corn cob pipe that was probably created on this farm I've enjoyed this step back in time that ends the tour of the living history 1800s homestead nothing back then was easy they worked hard for everything they touched and uh I have a greater respect for it now. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for coming along on Arab and Outdoors. I'm going to sit here a little longer and just enjoy the peace and quiet of this classic 1800s farm.